Hello, body massage. Today we're going to cover lesson three in T B O N, which is the acronym for Take Back Our Narrative. The title of today's lesson is going to be titled Creation is a Fact Based on Math and Science. We're covering this lesson um, to show you how creation is the better narrative to go with versus the theory of evolution any day. We're going to go and review each one of these narratives briefly, but I just want to say, body and Messiah, we have to hold on to the truth of God's word no matter what. And we have been told for decades that the theory of evolution is something that is logical um, and better fitting than creation. And I'm going to show and reveal to you today that that's not the situation. Evolution, this theory of evolution has been out here for decades and it's still called a theory for a reason. If you look up the definition of theory, the definition of a theory means it's an educated guess. So they've been guessing about this theory of evolution for years. Oh, I have here brief rundowns of the theory of evolution, and we're also going to cover um, other theories that have been mentioned in order to try and back up evolution, which is the Big Bang Theory and theory Darwinism, which is also known as survival of the fittest or natural selection. But before we begin to go into details about this, I want us to look at two items. This is a watch. Okay, and this next item is a type of Lego stand. I want you to think real quickly of two reasons as to why you believe those two items have a creator and they were created as opposed to evolving over millions and millions of years. Every day we look around at all these items that are created by engineers or scientists or the people who are just inventors in general. And we don't have to go into any detailed explanation as to why we know certain items are created. In the same way, we have to tackle um, evolution versus creation. We, our bodies as human beings, even this planet Earth, everything, every detail on planet Earth, has a complication and a complicated structure that is much more detailed than a simple watch, wrist watch, or a Lego stand. But we have no reason to feel that we're obligated to define and explain and prove that these items were created. So why should we, as far as man's sake is concerned, as far as the creation of Earth? I just want you guys to think about that for a little while. As I go into details about this lesson, I'm going to show you based on mathematics that the theory of evolution could not have just happened by chance. And I'm going to use the mathematics of probability. And I'm going to have you review one article associated with that. So let's begin. Let's begin with discussing the in detail, well, brief detail, a summary of the theory of evolution. So the theory of evolution began, uh, it basically is stating that things evolve over time in order to better fit their environment as the environment changed. So over a period of millions of years or hundreds of thousands of years, particular uh, single cell organisms or animals, they just evolve in order to adapt to their environment. But before we get to the evolution of individual creatures, we need to know how did the planet Earth come into being or even our galaxy come into being. And this is where scientists have come up with the Big Bang Theory. They say that there were elements out there in space, every element that was needed in order to generate, just say the planet Earth, Mars, Jupiter, all of the different planets that are in our solar system. And these elements were out there in space, mixing and melding, and all of a sudden, boom, they clashed together and there was a big bang or an explosion. And out of that explosion, there was a gravitational attraction that, that occurred and then appeared, 
and caused our galaxy to form. I want to show you the definition of a galaxy real quick. A galaxy is a system of millions or billions of stars held together by gravitational attraction. Now, as far as Earth is concerned, our galaxy is called the Milky Way. This is the galaxy in which our Earth is contained in. Okay? So, this galaxy formed the Milky Way, and then one of the planets that was created out of the Milky Way was Earth. Now, Earth starts off being a watery slush, and then over millions of years, there was a single cell organism that evolved. After millions of more years or hundreds of thousands of years, multi-cell organisms evolved. Then these multi-celled organisms, out of those, there was a fish-like creature to evolve. And from being a fish-like creature, there was another creature that began to uh, cohabitate in between land and water. And some of them probably developed some lungs or what have you. And then an amphibious type of creature uh, developed or evolved. Like, you know, amphibians or like frogs, tadpoles. And then over time, uh, reptiles or reptilian creatures evolved, like lizards and snakes. And then over time, you have animals that began to, to walk uh, um, semi-upright, but their knuckles dragging the ground like monkeys. And you have mammal-like animals that were generated. So you have the monkeys. And then over millions of more years, supposedly this monkey uh, stopped growing hair, began to walk upright on its two legs and, and grow upright, and you have human beings. The reason they give, like I said, for different creatures or animals or, or living creatures to evolve was the theory of Darwinism, meaning that certain animals will evolve in order to adapt better to their environment. And as these new creatures evolve, the old one will die out. And that's where you have Darwinism also being known as survival of the fittest or natural selection. Because over time, those old creatures who never seem to adjust and adapt will just die off and die away. There's no more purpose in them. But these new creatures continue to generate and evolve over time to better fit their environment. That's the summary of the theory of evolution. Now for creation, we're gonna go and you can read later on your own, Genesis chapter one and two. But I wanna give a summary of these two chapters as we talk about how the earth was formed and developed and, and how man was. So in the beginning, there was darkness and a void and chaos. And Adonai Elohim said, let there be light. He named the darkness night and the light day. He also formed morning and evening. He allowed the grass, plants, and fruits, fruit trees to grow. They produced seeds according to their own species. He also created all the creeping, crawling, and flying creatures after its own species. Then he blessed them, and he said, be fruitful and multiply. He created man in his own image to till the land. He saw it was not good for man to be alone. So he put man asleep and took a rib from his side and created woman. Man was given dominion over all the animals and plants. He was also told that he can eat from every plant, every fruit tree on the earth, excluding one tree. And we know what that tree is. But anyhow, there's even an explanation that is given for the rain. When God saw that the vegetation wasn't generating and, and, and reproducing again, he allowed a mist to come off the ground and to be absorbed into the sky. And then it began to fall back down in order to water the earth. And that's the explanation that is given for rain. So there you have it, creation versus evolution. As you can see, creation is showing you based on the word of God and the Torah, that God created things out of chaos. There was a void and darkness, but God spoke them into being. He allowed the plants and the grass and the fruit trees and all that to grow, and they created seeds after their own species. 
even all the animals. And he blessed them. He wanted them to be fruitful and to multiply. And the purpose he created man is so he could till the land and he could eat of all the plants in the, uh, uh, that were out there. And he also gave man dominion over the animals and plants. And he had a purpose. Woman has a purpose because it was not good for man to be alone. And that woman was created in order to be his helpmate. She was created in order to help man. So all of this shows that there was chaos, but God created structure and things out of an intelligent design, and, and they were created for a purpose. Now, Body Messiah, I said I was going to show you how, based on probability, that things could not have just evolved by chance over and over again, chance things happening. There is a mathematic, um, there's math that is called probability. And I'm not going to bore you with the details of going into what probability is, but I want to try and break it down in layman's terms for you. Probability means the chance that something is going to happen. And so let's take, for example, if we took 100 students from a school and we had a lottery, and this lottery was going to based on, be based on selecting one unique number from 1 to 100. So mind you, we have 100 students and each one of those students is supposed to pick one unique number, one to 100. There is going to be a lottery or drawing where one of the numbers is going to be picked. And so the chance that a person will win is one in 100. That's probability. The probability or the chance that someone is going to win that lottery is one out of 100. Now I want you guys to go and look up an article. Okay. This article is named, is titled, Earth May Be a 1 in 700 Quintillion Kind of Place. This article was published on February the 22nd in 2016 by a man named Nathaniel Sharpin. And this is saying that the Earth is a 1 in 700 quintillion kind of place. I mean, that means the chance that Earth may have been generated or created out of chance is one in 700 quintillion. You can't fit enough zeros on the screen in order to represent one in 700 quintillion. So that just goes to show you that there is no chance. This is one scenario of just Earth being generated. Now imagine for each one of these scenarios from the Big Bang to a galaxy, to a solar system, to planets and stars, including Earth being created, every single one of these represents a one and 700 quintillion or more chance. So that's just like saying someone, there's a lottery where there's one and 700 quintillion numbers. And a person keeps winning it over and over, one single person over and over and over and again. Even when you look at the evolution of individual species and you look at single cell organisms as opposed to multi-cell organisms, you have all these probable chances. They're trying to say, based on the theory of evolution, <coughs> that all of a sudden it just happened by chance over and over and over and over and over again. All of these create creatures, all of the, the, the plant life, all of the animal life on earth, which is created for a purpose. There is no way these things happen by chance over and over and over again. I want to give you another understanding of how the theory of evolution and specifically the Big Bang does not make logical sense based on science. You see this watch here? If I took this watch and took it apart and took every piece apart and just set it out on the counter, just individual pieces as, after I've broken this watch down, and then all of a sudden I set a firecracker on the table and just blew it up. I don't care how many times I blow every individual piece up that's sitting on the table, it's not going to come together and form a perfect watch with structure and purpose. 
based on science, the Big Bang Theory, would never happen. There have been over decades, many scientists that used to be bullied into believing that they have to believe in the theory of evolution as opposed to creation in order to be taken serious, seriously as a scientist. But now the tides have begun to change over the past few decades because scientists and math mathematicians are showing that there is no way that things happen by chance based on these theories. They know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the earth was formed by a creator and that people were formed by a creator, plant life by a creator, because all of these designs are intelligent designs. So body Messiah, you need to make sure that you teach your children and teach them to understand to not be bullied by these theories that are taught in school. Yeah, it's okay for you to learn these theories in order to pass your test. I did it when I was in high school, but it was no way. Just in my logical mind, even without me knowing details of the Bible, that I would ever accept that all of a sudden man just evolved or even the earth just evolved out of chance for no reason. Everything has a structure and a purpose. And when I began to combat even my high school teacher on that, she would just shut down. I've had teachers that were in college that I was like questioning, why would these things happen? Now I'm gonna place up here something that just based on logic, there's no way. There are just logical common sense reasons why evolution could not be possible just by chance. And hold on, I'm gonna place it up here for you to view. Here are three logical reasons why evolution is not a fact. Number one, I already gave you a rundown of how the basis of the Big Bang Theory does not make scientific sense at all. Never in history has an explosion ever created structure and order. Never in history. And there's not going to be. Where an explosion creates perfect structure and order. The second reason, the basis of Darwinism, which is survival of the fittest. Right? In evolution, species, the old species die out and the new species evolve. But the question I always had when I was in college is, if the old species die out, why are the monkeys still here? If they're saying that man evolved from monkeys or monkey-like creatures, why are monkeys still here? There's no evidence for uh that supports that these old species die when you have everything on the evolutionary chart that is shown from amphibious things, from, from all the reptiles, from the mammals. Nothing has died out based on their evolutionary chart that when you go and look up and see, these creatures still are alive today. So that disproves survival of the fittest. Because if man so-called evolved from monkeys, the monkeys should not be here. You will also know, just based on logic, there is no evidence of continual transitional creatures. When I say transitional creatures, I'm talking about creatures that are in between. There, there is not. If things evolve over millions of years, and let's take, for example, from monkey to man, there should be millions of bones of transitional creatures in between, half monkey man or what have you. Um, there should be transitional creatures in between the reptiles and amphibian, millions of them, if they evolved over millions of years, but they have not finding evidence of things that happen and there are transition of creatures or animal life. The third reason, it's just based on probability. There's not a repetitive coincidence that will show that these events in evolution happen by chance. There has to be intelligent structure. You're telling me you're trying to make me believe in a theory of evolution based on saying that there was an explosion and over time, if it takes long enough, millions of years, things just all of a sudden start changing for no reason really. Even when you give me survival of the fittest, there's no logic behind it. 
because you're not giving me the reason why these things genuinely evolve and you're not giving me the proof based on science. So there is no way that there is logic for supporting evolution and trying to make it be a fact when over decades and decades it has not been proven. So bottom aside, we have to take back our narrative in this and teach our children our next generation. They're created for a purpose. They're created by God for a purpose and they're loved by God. If I had this particular Lego stand and I was sitting here thinking like, you know, what is the purpose of this? I wouldn't know. But in order to find out, I have to go to the creator. This Lego stand came to me and it was disassembled and I wouldn't know how to place it back together in order to figure out what's wrong with it and, and how to generate it. What I have to do is go back to the instruction guide, go back to the creator and the creator will help me place it back together again. Voila. This is what we have to do in life. We have to go back to the creator in order to find our purpose, in order to know what our purpose is. The Torah is our instructional guide that Adonai gave us in knowing our purpose and knowing how to follow instructions as far as his command in order to live our best lives and live it with longevity. So we have to go back to the instruction guide. Creation is far beyond a fact as opposed to evolution. When we look at the complexity of our bodies, of our eyes, of our, our digestive system, of our nervous system, the complexity, we know there had to be an intelligent designer behind all of this. And so we have to give it up to the most high and focus on that narrative and never let go. There are a lot of things that have been taught out there by people who don't believe in God, people who are, um, who even do believe in God, who are agnostic, but they just don't believe that we can know anything about God. But God has told us that he created us for a purpose and told us what for. So we have to trust him more than man and begin to teach our children, our family members, all of our little smart, intelligent um, brothers and sisters that go off to college to never let go of God. He's placed everything out there for us to understand and know him and live our life to the fullest. Well, body and side, that is the end of lesson three of TBON. I hope you're able to join me for the next lesson. Until next time, may Adonai Elohim cover you and shower you with this shalom peace. Goodbye.